Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we are going to be taking a look at another one of these unofficial Windows versions. Now it's been about six months since I last took a look at uh, one of these unofficial versions of the Windows operating system. That last one was Windows 8 Green Edition and that video did you know pretty well you guys really seem to like that video and I definitely have some more versions of these that I want to take a look at but today we're gonna to be focusing on one called Windows XP Ultimate Edition and this was actually sent in as a request by one of you guys out there you know who you are and I want to give a huge thank you to you for actually suggesting this um, but essentially what this is is as the name suggests a unofficial custom made version of the Windows XP operating system actually created by a guy who is only known as Johnny online and what's very uh, unique about this one is this is actually based off of Windows XP Media Center Edition so it's not based off of Home Edition or of Windows XP Professional this is uh, off of Media Center Edition and I don't believe I've ever taken a look at an XP um, unofficial Windows version based on Media Center Edition. I think this is the very first one. So, uh, very excited to kind of see what this is all about. From what I hear, this is essentially, as most of these versions are, it uh, does come bundled with some custom themes and some extra freeware programs that you normally wouldn't get with Media Center Edition. But this does not contain as many programs as Last XP. Now, uh, Last XP, I did a video on uh, a while back and I kind of called last XP the ultimate Windows XP CD because it essentially came with just a, a ton of software and uh, so this although it's called Windows XP ultimate edition it does not contain as much as as a uh, last XP but it definitely still contains a good amount of stuff because the actual ISO image file for XP ultimate is uh, 4.23 gigabytes now keep in mind that XP media center edition uh, came in at 700 megabytes. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and actually power on this computer or this virtual machine here. And we're going to be jumping right into Windows XP Ultimate Edition. Now I'm probably going to skip through the majority of this setup process here because I don't really think there's anything that has been modified on this first portion here. But once we actually get into the uh, part where it asks us for our user information and our time zone and all of that, uh, information. I'll actually come back and see if it's any different there. All right, so we are back, and yeah, I, I was pretty much right about that last segment there. There wasn't re really anything that was different. There wasn't really anything different at all about uh, that last or that previous phase of the setup. What we're doing now is we're booting into this phase of the setup, which, as you can see, looks a lot different. We've got some Windows Vista uh, design going on here. We've got like um, that wallpaper that came with Windows Vista. We've got uh, some arrow-ish effects going on over here. And they have changed the text up here to say Windows XP Ultimate sports a visual design that combines a sleek look, clean lines, and appealing colors with a task-oriented design and exceptionally streamlined navigation. So, uh, yes, this is one thing that I also read about online, is that this kind of tries to make Windows XP look like Windows Vista, which was very popular at that time back in 2008 when this pack came out. There were a lot of uh, tools that would allow you to uh, essentially transform your XP installation to look more like Windows Vista. And I actually use one of them, I believe it was made by a website called WindowsXLive.net, and it was called the Vista Transformation Pack, and it essentially would, it was a whole pack, it was actually like an EXE file that you would download, and it would just install a bunch of, you know, custom themes, and it would just make your XP system look like Windows Vista, which at the time I thought was just like the coolest thing, because my, uh, my computer couldn't run Windows Vista, it didn't meet the minimum requirements, so I was stuck on XP, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, I guess, but... Uh, I just wanted it to look like Vista, so I found that tool and I actually used it for a good amount of time. So we're going to go ahead and just choose our uh, typical network settings here, make it a part of the work group, work group. And uh, yeah, so this, these um, like text blurbs here are changed, you know, this says work anytime, anywhere, XP Ultimate features great improvements to the mobile professional. Windows XP enables you to connect your desktop from almost anywhere. So kind of just there's some stuff that just came with Windows XP. Like, I mean, remote desktop, for example, that's like nothing new that came with Windows XP. But he's also talking about some of the things that XP Ultimate specifically includes, which is pretty cool. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let this finish up here. It's probably just going to go through with, you know, the standard uh, rest of these steps here. 
hopefully it's not going to take 24 minutes this said like 35 minutes like a couple minutes ago so i don't think it's going to take this you know like a whole 24 minutes of, of time but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just pause the video here and I will come back once we are either at the desktop or at the next portion of the installation. All right, so we are now at the installing components section of the setup right here. Now, before that I started recording, I saw that uh, there were a couple of windows that popped up on the screen that went away automatically. So I'm going to uh, just go ahead and assume that there's probably going to be some automated scripts when we actually boot into Windows XP Ultimate, which is another very common thing with these unofficial Windows versions is that there are usually automated scripts that will go ahead and install all of the themes and the third party software for you, which is very convenient because you don't have to you know, do, like, do anything with your keyboard and mouse. You just have to sit here and let the uh, machine do everything for you. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna sit on the screen and just wait for it to uh, Okay, so see here, here we go right here. We already got something. It says Windows XP Ultimate install tablet PC. We'll go ahead and say yes, even though that I have no intention. I mean, I, I can't use this with a, a tablet PC at all because it's in. Oh, it just automatically went away. Okay, well, never mind then. I guess we're going to not install it. All right, so we've just completed that portion of the setup, and I assume the computer is going to go ahead and reboot. And. We should be going into that phase where it's going to run all those automated scripts before going to the desktop, but this one might do it a little bit differently. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, run Windows XP Ultimate there instead of the Windows Recovery Console, which is very interesting. And so far it looks like we have our standard XP boot screen. They haven't changed anything here as of yet, but that could change on uh, another reboot. And there we go, check it out. So it says, you know, they had uh, modified the logo there. We're gonna go ahead and just press okay. And this should boot us into the out of box experience. Let's uh, let's see what it does here. So you see, it says Windows XP, and he added Ultimate Edition by Johnny there to the bottom. And let's see if this is the same out of box experience. I'm I'm guessing it's not going to be. There's probably going to be some things that are going to be different about it. I mean, judging from the fact that that setup portion was much different. So we've got the same music in the background and the same boot up or uh, starting animation. And okay, so yeah, like I thought, it, it does kind of take on that same theme from the installer where it's got that Windows Vista uh, background, but it looks like everything else, besides for the fact that there's this logo up here, uh, everything else hasn't really been changed. It's the same uh, layout for everything. This top bar, I believe, is actually literally from the regular out-of-box experience. He just added Ultimate Edition by Johnny over here. So we're gonna go, gonna go ahead and just go through the setup here. We're gonna skip the internet uh, connectivity because we don't need to do that. We'll go ahead and type in my name here. And that's it. So it doesn't mention anything about Ultimate Edition in here, so this has not been changed. So let's click on Finish, and this is usually where the um, automated scripts usually start to begin. So we've got a Windows Vista-esque uh, login screen here. It literally looks identical. It's that same background. Uh, the same uh, you know logo and text placement like Windows Vista has obviously it just says XP Ultimate Edition. What is missing though is that arrow circle you know like the spinning thing that's usually on the welcome screen that is gone. Okay so here is where it's going to go ahead and install uh, whatever programs that it has bundled here. So it looks like it's got uh, general updates it's already done it's going to install the Nero suite Media Center Rollup 2, which I assume is a update to Media Center Edition, AVG Antivirus and Spyware, and then it's going to restart the computer. So if this does take a decent amount of time, I'll go ahead and actually speed up this portion of the video so you guys can kind of see what it's doing. But hopefully it's either going to do this in the background or it's going to do that cool effect where it like auto moves the mouse cursor around to uh, whatever boxes that it automatically needs to you know, check like to move on with the installation. So it's on the Nero suite right now and nothing's come up on the screen. So I assume it's doing this in the background, but we'll see if we get any windows that uh, pop up. So we just had a, a CMD window pop up there, but it automatically went away. So it was probably just running uh, some scripts there and you can see that it didn't, or I mean, I guess you probably couldn't see because I've probably cut the uh, video by now, but there were no pop-ups or dialog boxes from Nero at all. So I assume it's doing all of this in the background. So now it's uh, installing Media Center Rollup 2. And 
this is probably not, I mean, it's probably not just going to install these few uh, programs and updates. It's probably going to restart and then go ahead and install some more. But this is just basically at the waiting uh, phase. So like I said, if anything interesting happens, I'll come back. But if not, uh, the next time that you hear from me, we'll be at the desktop. All right, so we are back and here we are at the desktop. Now, this actually didn't do what I thought it was going to do. I thought that we were going to be seeing a custom Windows Vista theme with a new wallpaper, but it's actually just using the regular um, Windows XP Media Center Edition theme. So that's actually very, very interesting. You see, we have AVG Free 8.0 Nero uh, Start Smart, which is a, you know, like the app that uh, when you double click on it, basically comes up with all of the, uh, the different Nero applications you have installed on your system. We've got Adobe Reader 9 here. And let's see what it actually, uh, while Nero is loading up here, let's see what it actually installed here. So it actually looks like there's not. Um, oh, actually, I uh, take that back. Let me go ahead and just close out of Nero here. So at first glance, it doesn't look like there's that much installed here. We've got like the regular Windows programs, which looks like they've uh, applied some Windows Vista icons because this is not the normal XP icon for Windows Media Player. We have a program called ALZIP. Uh, Media Center is the like, you know, Media Center for Windows XP Media Center Edition. We have uh, Windows Live, Windows Digital Media Enhancements, uh, Neuro 8. In games, we've got Brutal Chess, which is new. Uh, this is not, let, let's actually launch this. I wonder what this is. I guess this is like a third party game. It looks like it was put in this pack so that it could uh, mimic the Windows Vista chess game. Although it is very, very laggy, but that's probably because I think I only gave this machine like one gig of RAM. Um, so yeah, we got chess there. We'll go ahead and just uh, close out of that. So that is cool. AVG free and under accessories here, it looks like we've got all the standard stuff like you would expect. Uh, but then we have like RK Launcher down here and Top Desk and uh, also Desk Space here. So Desk Space is uh, a desktop switching tool essentially. Oh, well, pff, well, it's not really working very well. It just crashed here. OK, it usually allows you to have multiple uh, different desktops, which Windows Vista didn't even have. Microsoft didn't add that until Windows 10. That was uh, the first version of Windows to have like multiple desktops, although there were many third party programs. Um, prior to Microsoft officially introducing it in Windows 10. But uh, Desk Space is, yeah, it's a uh, virtual desktop tool that actually provides some pretty cool effects in actually changing desktops. We might actually have to do a video on this because this is definitely a very cool piece of software. But uh, that's not for now because I can't even get the thing to work. It just instantly crashes. Might be Maybe I have to increase the RAM because I only gave this one gig of RAM thinking that it wouldn't use more than that. Um, but I think that the uh, desk space with its, you know, 3D animations and all of that, it probably needs more than one gig of RAM. Uh, RK Launcher is a program which just adds um, a, you know, Mac OS like dock to the screen, which is pretty cool. But yeah, this is one of the many, uh, I mean, one of the three that I know of. There's again, Object Dock, RK Launcher, and Rocket Dock. I personally used Rocket Dock on my XP machine years ago, and I used it for. Uh, a while because it was just a really cool piece of software. So what what most people would do is they would usually either hide the taskbar or move the taskbar to the top of the screen and uh, apply, I mean, if you were going for making your system look like Mac OS X, uh, you would apply a theme to make the um, you know taskbar and start menu look like the Mac OS uh, menu bar. And that would essentially uh, make your whole system look like a Mac at first glance, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and lock the uh, taskbar. We'll go ahead and just uh, leave um, RK Launcher down here for now. And uh, we've got ALZIP, which I assume is a uh, archive tool. Yeah, so ALZIP beta. It actually has kind of its own theme here. That's kind of interesting. So yeah, the easiest archive program. It is unregistered copyright 2007. So yeah, most of this software in here, actually probably all of it, because this thing was made in 2008, uh, is this is just going to include older software from back in that time. So this is almost like a time capsule, because all of this software in here is. I know that Nero, like Nero, doesn't even use version numbers in their naming anymore. Like the latest version is, is uh, just called Nero 2019. So this is Nero 8.0 probably from like, you know, around 2007 or eight. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and actually see if it installed some themes. So it looks like, okay, so we've got some uh, custom themes. That's that, that's pretty nice. 
Let's go ahead and check out the Windows Vista one here. So yeah, it looks right off the bat like Windows Vista. We'll go ahead and uh, hit apply and see what it does. Okay, so yeah, it totally makes this uh, you know start menu and uh, taskbar look more like Windows Vista. We're gonna go ahead and actually close out of RK Launcher here just to uh, bring the taskbar back down here. If you just made the icons larger and made the start button a little bit larger, like the start orb a little bit larger, uh, you could, I mean, fool, yeah, you could basically fool somebody into thinking that this is Windows Vista. I mean, you could probably do that, like for a really novice uh, computer user, you could probably uh, convince them that it's uh, Windows Vista as it stands right now. But Windows Vista isn't the only theme in here. We've got Aquarium, uh, Da Vinci, which I think these are actually from the Plus Pack. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think that, yeah, I think this might actually be from the Plus Pack. I did a video on Windows XP Plus. Uh, or uh, Microsoft Plus for Windows XP, and I'm pretty sure it had uh, DaVinci, Aquarium, and one other one, maybe it was Nature, um, where it just basically changed the wallpaper and, the, and uh, adjusted the theme slightly. It did not do as much as like uh, Plus for 95 did. So those are kind of boring. We've got a Linux theme here too as well, which looks like it might make it look like Ubuntu Linux, or uh, KDE, is that, yeah, that's the, uh, like the KDE K down there. So this is a very uh, interesting theme here. We'll go ahead and click on OK to get out of that. So it changes the taskbar. It makes the, like, the start button look almost like an icon there. It's, it's not even really like a button at this point. And even changes like the folders too. Let's go ahead and open up a uh, file explorer here or uh, Windows Explorer. It still keeps the Windows Vista like icons in there. So you see we've got like the user folder and everything, but it, it even has the cursor is uh, changed over as well. You see that's like a uh, Ubuntu or a uh, KDE cursor. So we'll go ahead and go into, uh, let's just go to, to C here show contents so yeah it has kind of oh there, there's even like a tab mode going on up here so yeah it's it's kind of uh wow it's got like the that's actually pretty cool it's got like uh the i mean like the hourglass animation for the cursor like the waiting animation is that uh spinning circle like it is in ubuntu that's that's pretty cool so they've they've definitely done some work in or johnny has definitely done i mean i don't know if it's just johnny that, that's uh, worked on this or if there's multiple people but the thing says by johnny so i assume it's just him but uh yeah this is a pretty cool theme i don't know if he made these themes i mean i'm pretty sure he didn't make at least the windows vista one because uh, I've personally used that before. So these themes were probably made by other people, but just bundled into this OS by him. So uh, Windows XP is like the standard XP one, and Mac OS, this is actually probably going to look cool with uh, RK Launcher. This is a great example here. So yeah, all you would have to do is move the taskbar up here to the top of the screen. We'll lock it. You would have to get rid of uh, the Quick Launcher here. So you just get rid of Quick Launch. And yeah, you do have some of these icons over here, which kind of gives it away. But all you have to do is at this point, just launch. So you just launch it there, and there you go. Looks, uh, I mean, all you would have to do is uh, get rid of these icons, uh, all these icons here, and kind of tweak this up here. But you would have a pretty convincing Mac OS-like uh, desktop. So yeah, we even have the show, oh, well, that just totally got rid of RK Launcher there. RK Launcher will also, I mean, you can see it has the Safari icon for IE, but it will also, when you actually go ahead and minimize, uh, or I think you have to enable that in the settings here. So yeah, you can turn on minimize to RK Launcher, and that will literally make the uh, the windows, okay, well maybe not, maybe, maybe we're going to close out of it. Well, normally it's supposed to uh, minimize down to RK Launcher, but it's not doing that unfortunately but just imagine that it that, that it's working like it normally is supposed to all right welcome back so i've done a couple of things to the vm here mainly i just went ahead and i've increased the ram count and the uh, core count on this system so this now has a dual core processor and four gigabytes of ram which would literally max out 32-bit uh, Windows XP. I mean, you could have more RAM, but the OS can only utilize up to 4 gigabytes since it's 32-bit. So what I wanted to do now is see if we can use a, a desk space here. So let's see if this thing will actually work. 
because this is this is uh, this program probably deserves its own video because I think it's a pretty cool piece of software. I don't think I've ever actually used it. I think I wanted to use it or I wanted to, to use something like it. Yeah, it's just gonna crash. Okay, so I guess it just doesn't doesn't work. I mean, this thing has enough memory now. Uh, I mean, the maximum amount of uh, memory that it can use, and it still doesn't want to work. So, uh, yeah, like I said, Desk Space might end up being in its own video. Be sure to uh, drop me a comment and let me know if you guys want to see that, and I could definitely do it. One thing I did want to take a look at is, so this Windows Digital Media Enhancements folder. Back in, uh, yeah, I, I want to see either 2014, 2015, I did a series of videos covering Microsoft Plus. And Microsoft Plus was, it started back in Windows 95 as a companion package to Windows. It was released alongside Windows, and it basically provided some extra features. And a lot of the ones that came in 95 Plus actually made their way into future editions of Windows by default. And the last pack that they did was actually a bundle of two of them. It was the uh, Microsoft Plus for Windows XP. And they also released one called Microsoft Plus Digital Media Edition. And I have two separate videos covering the Windows XP Plus pack and the Digital Media Edition. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, these media enhancements. What I really want to do is just load up the Windows Dancer because this thing is, this is just pretty hilarious. <laughs> so this was, this is literally, you can be playing music. I think you may actually have to be playing music for, okay. So, no, you don't have to be playing music for it to work. But, yeah, what this is is literally just this, like, dude. I, I mean, you can make this multiple different avatars, I, I think. You can... So, I guess it thinks music is playing now because he's dancing. But, um, what, what, it, what it literally is, I mean, I don't know what you would use this for, but it's literally just a animation that sits on your desktop and moves around, like... Yeah, so it's not going to find this this page. But th this is the entirety of the program right here. Like this is this was basically what I said back in that in that other video is it's it's literally just like almost like Bonzi Buddy or, uh, or or something like that, but it's not malware number 1 and number 2, it doesn't actually like you can't really interact with it. It just like <laughs> it just like first of all I can't even move it to like the far corner of, of the screen it's maxed out like right here um, but yeah you can just like sit them on your on your on your taskbar there and so I don't know what music it thinks it's playing right now but I mean we can just go with like okay let's see here uh, Hawk I mean I, I, are these just like random yeah these are literally just like random I don't think these are based off of anything, Ben. Who do we? Oh, <laughs> this is like an actual guy. Like an actual guy had to had to sit here and do this though. Oh my gosh! Yeah, some of these are like animated. Like, see this one, whichever one this is, based on music. Oh no! Now it's now it's just picking them at random. <laughs> I don't think this was in the. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I don't think this was in the Digital Media Edition, but these are like actual people, like people had to sit here and do all of these like movements and stuff, they just threw them a towel. But yeah, which one was that? Was that um, like Exile? Oh, that's literally just like nothing, I mean you can barely see him there. Oh yeah, okay, this one here, like this is obviously like an animation, I mean this isn't like a real dude, right? I mean. So this is like an animation, but those th those other ones are like literally people that stood in front of a camera and did all these crazy moves. I mean, they must have gotten paid pretty well because I don't know who would do this, like who would volunteer to do this. You'd have to have a lot of free time on your hands, number one. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to go ahead and exit out of that for now. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of those did not come in the original video, or I'm just totally forgetting and I had this similar reaction in that original video, but if you guys have seen that video, be sure to let me know. But there you have it. <laughs> that is Windows XP Ultimate Edition in its entirety. It's definitely not like as much stuff packed in here as I thought it was going to be, or as I thought was going to be packed in here. 
but there's definitely still some pretty cool things. I mean, the ability to uh, change all these themes, which isn't really like anything uh, exclusive to this OS at all. I mean, you can do this on like the regular version of uh, Windows XP, but the fact that it comes with all these different themes that you can choose from is definitely a, a nice touch. But yeah, there you have it. That is going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload new videos, which I do every single week on this channel. And uh, be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your your thoughts on XP Ultimate Edition. Is this something that you would actually use? You probably won't want to use this on your main computer, but maybe on like a secondary system that you don't really care that much about, or even in a VM like I've done here. Is this something that you would want to use? Um, be sure to uh, let me know your thoughts, and also if you have any other video suggestions for the future, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.